for them. They swap positions all the way through the early stages just now. I think Louise would rather fancy her chances with her experience in this race. So she moves ahead of Mark Burnett as they turn through Paddock and sets off in pursuit of Peter Servant. 20 minute race. And so we think we've been special from the Servant. So in that one, we've got to Mark Burnett. That's um, car 35 of Nick Lathan there in the tire wall on the exit of the, uh, on the run down to Graham Hill. So that's his, his, his third ever race in the race mini and he's already closed in the tire wall. Not bad going, but look at what we see coming through to it. Cut ball chasing car 82 and Stuart Combs rubbing door handles as they fight to try and come down the hill towards Graham, uh, to Graham Hill. But actually, ha having said that, look at Stuart Combs. He's going to hang him out to drive, but no, ball chasing car 82 takes the lead. And we see car 69, Michael Dryden there. Look at car 70 coming through, coming through Graham Hill completely sideways. These guys are enjoying these conditions, I'm sure. Well, as you were saying yesterday, Roger, in the drive, the trick to drive these meetings is to flick it into the corner, and in the wet, well, you do that, and then it, it really pays back with subs. Already, Adrian Tutley is at the rear of the field. He's just gone past uh, the uh, car of Malcolm King in 87, so Tutley getting the move on, trying to find his way back up through the order. But at the front of the field, we've got the top three who are re relatively well-spaced. The fastest lap of the race goes to Peter Turvert, which is immediately beaten by Louise Inch. So Louise is beginning to close in on Peter, and then Mark Burnett is trying to stretch his legs at the moment over Paul Chaser, and Chaser has got really the rest of the field, Rugby Lider Sturt, just behind him. So he's going to try and move away. It's Stuart Coombs is next round through, and then Dryden as well. The, the, the cars are on the seat is so pointy through Paddock. Absolutely, but I think the trick with these, as we were saying yesterday, Ben, is to just push the tail out slightly and drive it on a drift. We saw Adrian Hunter get caught out really, really silly going into uh, going through Paddock for the first time. So it just goes to show Adrian, Adrian Tuckley has won four of these races so far. And so even with his experience, we can see him still getting caught out. Louis Inch coming through Graham Hill there on an absolute full lock trying to get the car to turn in. But it just wouldn't do that. We see another car, that's James, James Goodall, coming through Paddock. Uh, not Paddock, I should say, through Graham Hill completely sideways. But if you look at the aspect of the bend, the cars coming through the bend there, um, the bends bend, you can actually see that they're driving these cars virtually on opposite lock. They really are, and uh, they are having to work very hard to keep these cars on the road. So we've got the leading quartet, which at this stage of the race is looking relatively settled. I'm sure that that will change. And then we've got the next four cars, from about four car lengths, and it's Stuart Coombs who is leading that little gap. It's then Michael Dryden, who's the next man through. We have also got David Rumbelow in amongst that mix, and Wesley Dunford, and it's Rumbelow and Dryden who go side by side over start and finish line, and it's going to be a positional gain. I think Rumbelow and Wesley Dunford follows him through, so Michael Dryden is left on the outside through Paddock Hill Bend. Maybe the best place to be, because then you can see if any of those ahead of him get it wrong. So don't do on this case. What about the gap between these seven and Louis Inch and the off route to the server? We've got another spinner there, didn't quite catch the number with Paddock, but the last place you want to be parked at Paddock. However, everyone's missed him so far, and we'll be seeing Mark and King going around the outside of him. And that car, I can't quite see the number, but we'll get we'll give you an idea of that, who that is fairly soon. But the frustrating for the for the for the spectators, as we had yesterday, where the, the front cars actually managed to get away, but there's an absolute ding-dong battle going on in the mid-pack here from fourth fifth position backwards and I, I dare say for you, you guys in the Graham Hill grandstand you must be smiling from ear to ear to see these guys going lock to lock and power on power off with these cars to try and get them going well. They really are having a great time and the, I don't think the battle at the front is settled just yet because in these conditions the slightest error and that advantage can disappear in the heartbeat and we're seeing that with the fluctuations in lap times from the various drivers the gap goes out slightly between Turbot and Inch but Louise Inch is uh, still being kept very honest by Mark Burnett but it's the driver Paul Chaser in 82 is probably the man on the move and this time it's the turn of David Rumbelow to look to his son Stuart Coombs who covers that line off just in time and Rumbelow well he, everywhere he goes when he comes through with him and Coombs gets it very wrong he has to make the round again he says Rumbelow into the ground track and spins across the circuit let's hope nobody hits him I think he's going to get away with it he does and uh, so, well, the, the flick and the power slide may be just being done a bit too enthusiastically. And Stuart Coombs actually very lucky not to be hit. The innocent party there was David Rumbelow, who uh, had no option to but to take the gravel track. And so he has lost a couple of positions. He's gone down behind Wesley Dunford, down behind Michael Dryden, and the other car that he has lost out to as well is Thomas Mosley in car 33. But as you were saying earlier, Ben, you can see that Louise Inch is definitely closing up on Peter Turner. However, we still have some 14 minutes left of this, or 13 minutes left of this race. So anything can still happen. But I think looking at the, the, the ability of the, the, these, guys, these guys in the first four places, apart from Paul Chaser in car 82, Paul actually started with us last year and was lapped in his first race. So what a fantastic come on, particularly with the conditions that we're racing with here today. 
Yeah, and Louise Lynch has upped her pace. It's certainly set fast enough. The race while someone won it. Uh, 12.6. The real battle is closing up very nicely though is Mark Burnett is being caught by Paul Chaser and Chaser just keeping it nicely balanced. And then we've got uh, Wesley Dunsford, Dunsford who is just driving away from Michael Bryden and then the uh, rapidly recovering David Rumble we also should not discount Stuart too. but should not be deterred following that moment. And Jack is rejoined. Uh, Eric, Eric, Eric Tuckley. Tuckley, yes. So the two of them trying to get back to where they started the race from. Highly unlikely that either of them are going to win this race because of Peter, Peter Turvin is sitting pretty there in car 23 as he goes around. Under no pressure at all. all and if we look actually then, the signs are slightly 